So today we're gonna talk about the do's and don'ts of homekeeping when transitioning from living in an apartment or a smaller type of living space to a family sized home. You may be wondering why the crap am I making this video? Because whenever I was like dreaming of like moving into a home and having my family, I never imagined how much work it would be. Um, I honestly thought, you know, if everybody else can do it, I can do it too, I can handle it. And once I made that transition, it wasn't like as beautiful or as smooth as I thought it was gonna be. I felt like super overwhelmed and I'm just sitting here thinking like, how come Karen and all them can keep up with their homes and like it seems effortless for everybody else, but it's a struggle for me. And I think the main problem was I was trying to care for a large family size home the same way that I cared for my little dorm room in college and my apartment, you know, when my husband and I first became a family and got married. And basically my old trifling ways of homekeeping, it just wasn't helpful and basically my bad habits really caught up to me and it overwhelmed me and it just made me feel like I was doing an awful job when all I really needed to do was just tweak some things around okay so if you are getting ready to make that transition yourself or maybe you have and you're like struggling like I was for a really long time then maybe you might find some of my do's and don'ts helpful so we're gonna get into that today but before we get started, hi, my name is Lede, and I am the creator of Love Always Lede. And on this channel, we like to talk about peaceful homekeeping um, so that busy moms can get their life together and have a clean and organized space without feeling super overwhelmed in the process. I always feel like I have to add a disclaimer to every video um, because I just want it to be known that I acknowledge that my tips and my suggestions are not going to be for everybody. I'm very clear on who I'm talking to. Um, if you are somebody who organization and a beautiful aesthetic home like that runs through your veins, I'm happy for you, girl. I'm trying to get on your level, girl. But um, I know that there are a lot of people who want to have like the clean organized home and have something that's very functional but they're not sure how to get there and they try and they overwhelm themselves and that's what i'm speaking to i'm just trying to uh just share what has helped me um kind of get over that hump into kind of how i'm doing things now which as i always disclose is not perfect but it is um it's a huge transformation and myself and my home and I just want to share what's been helping me. So yeah, basically when I transitioned from living in an apartment to living in a home, I just assumed that there was one style of cleaning and basically my style of cleaning was wait until the sink was full of dishes, wait until I ran out of laundry, wait until my home was giving me like a mild panic attack and then da 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 da, let the cleaning commence. I would do like a lot of bench cleaning and I define bench cleaning as just feeling like you need to clean your home from top to bottom <clears throat> and you need to do it in one day. So I did a lot of that. And as I mentioned before, that worked for me when I lived in a smaller space. In addition, when I was growing up, um, I had working parents. And so we would like do our cleaning and stuff on the weekend. And that worked. It worked. That was the only thing that was ever modeled to me. And so um, when I came here, here in another home, um, I tried to use that same strategy and it completely kicked my butt. It was just too overwhelming and um, it just made me feel really crappy because I just felt like, why is it that everybody else can keep their homes together and I'm doing what everybody else is doing, but I don't have the energy to sustain it and I'm not feeling like I have enough energy to like do this all the time. And so I thought that there was something wrong with me. I never considered that there could be something wrong with the systems that I was using and my approach to it. Transitioning over to Fly Lady, 
has helped me out tremendously because now I feel like I can have a home that's just as clean as anyone else's and I can do it in a way that doesn't overwhelm me. So here is homekeeping mistake, large family homekeeping mistake number one, the one that I talked about, feeling like I had to do everything at one time. Um, when the house was bad, feeling like I needed to start and just clean the home from top to bottom. And um, that just didn't work for me. My energy levels don't support that type of cleaning. And now that I have a total of four kids, including twin toddlers, um, my kids won't even let me just have the time to clean from top the house from top to bottom. And if my husband is watching my kids, the last thing that I want to do is be cleaning. Okay. I thought that that was what everybody else was doing. So I tried to do it too. And the biggest problem that this led for to me is that what happened was I realized I just didn't have the energy to sustain um, that type of habit. So I would just pick like the most important things for me to take care of, which would be like dishes because, you know, a girl got to eat um, laundry because, you know, I don't want my kids going to school naked. And that was pretty much it. And just mainly like some general surface, cl surface clutter areas on places that we, you know, need it on a regular basis. So I would pick the most important things. And then I felt like I was just neglecting everything else. I always told myself that, oh, I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. There is like things that brooms in this house that completely got neglected because I kept telling myself, I'll do it later. I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And um, no, it, it never actually happened. And so um, I just, it made me feel guilty all the time to be blessed with a family home to take care of my family but i felt like i can't keep up with it like everyone else and i don't know why everybody else can do it and i can't and so that made me feel like crap so this is what i suggest the do is doing instead break your home down into sections um if your home is able to survive being neglected for extended amounts of time, then I suggest that you do something called zone cleaning. Um, zone cleaning is just going to take up your cleaning a notch without feeling like it's too much. When you break your home down into about four to five sections and you make sure that you are hitting each section, like giving each section focused attention and you rotate sections every week, then at least every area of your home will be getting some level of attention throughout the month and it won't be like overwhelming for you. And so let me explain how I have my sections broken down in my home. At the first week of the month, I just give extra love and attention to my entryway. So anything that people see when they first walk into my home. The second week of the month, I give special love to my kitchen. The third week of the month, I give special love to my boys' room and guest rooms upstairs. The fourth week of the month, I give special love to my master bedroom. And on the fifth week of the month, I, so basically where the end of the month kind of overlaps with the beginning of the next month, those couple of days, I will give special love to my living room. And during my zone cleaning time, I can do anything. Usually I will set my timer for 15 minutes and just do something to level up that space. So if I'm upstairs in zone three, that might mean vacuuming or dusting like you, it's incredible how much you can get done in 15 minutes. Um, so I will either spend that time decluttering, getting rid of stuff that I don't need anymore, organizing. I can spend that time vacuuming. I can spend that time deep cleaning. I can spend that time dusting. I can do whatever to that space that I feel like would level it up and make it better. And so that's the challenge that I have for myself that no matter the condition of the room, just find one thing that I can do to level it up, level it up. And so, yeah, like I was saying, the power of 15 minutes is incredible. Today, I did my zone cleaning and I was able to um, organize my office desk, get rid of paper. I was able to organize books. I was able to sweep. And then I was able to go to a whole different room and vacuum up a carpet. And so, you know, it's amazing what you can do for 15 minutes. Fly Lady suggests that we do zone cleaning pretty much every day or every weekday. But for me, I just try to aim to do it three times a week. But if you're beginning, you know, even one day a week of saying, I'm going to put my attention into this area of the home, it will take you such 
a long way. So if you know that you have a lot to do and you wanna see results really fast, definitely zone clean as often as you can, 15 minutes per day, and then in a certain area of your home. And, but if you're like more laid back, like um, maybe try three days a week. And if you really don't wanna do it, but you're tired of like neglecting areas in your home, then every Monday, I don't know, I'm just throwing out a random day, commit to going into a new area of your home and taking care of it or doing something to level up that space. That will help you out a lot. So that is my do. Okay, so what will happen if you do this is that you will be able to more evenly apply, is that the right word? Apply your effort or spread your effort throughout your home. This will get rid of the neglected area thing completely. This will also get rid of that I don't have time thing because you have set that time in your schedule however many times per week. And so now you have time to tackle projects. And in addition, when you see something like that's just going on, that's crazy in a certain part of your home, you don't feel that pressure to like drop everything and go handle it. Or you don't feel that pressure of, oh my God, I really should be doing this. Instead, you'll say to yourself that, okay, that's in zone three. I'll be in zone three next week and I will handle it then. So it really gives you that sense of confidence. It gives you that sense of being on top of stuff and you just don't feel that pressure to like drop everything and do something immediately because you know that you have time set up throughout your week and throughout your month to handle like different problem areas in your home. So um, the beauty of zone cleaning for me is that I now realize that I can have a home that's as immaculate as anyone else's and I don't have to like overwhelm myself or stress myself out in the process. I can spread myself, my energy evenly throughout the month and just do a little bit every day or as often as I can and still have results that are as good as anyone else. Now, do I have those results? No, because I don't care that much. <laughs> my home is, I just need my home to be comfortable for me. And that's what I suggest for you guys. Just make your home comfortable enough for you and you know if you want to have a perfect looking home then strive to make to use those 15 minutes to make it as perfect as you can and if you just want to be comfortable then use those 15 minutes 15 minutes to be comfortable and then reduce the number of days that you're zone cleaning my second don't for transitioning to a family-sized home is being a go with the flow kind of cleaner um yeah i used to be a go with the flow kind of cleaner as well and how I would know that it was time to clean is that I would see like a mess and then I'd be like, oh my God, like this needs to be handled. And so literally the stuff that I would tackle would just be the first most obvious thing in my face. And so meanwhile, there's lots of things that need to be handled on a regular basis um, that would, if you would just actually hold off on that thing that's calling your attention and go handle that first, it would just make your life so much easier and it would prevent a lot of problems from happening. Like it would just nip things in the butt before it even had a chance to become a problem. But I wanted to be, I didn't trust myself to be like on a routine. I didn't trust myself to have like a rigid schedule because I didn't think that I was disciplined enough. And knowing what I know now, it is much harder to be a go with a flow cleaner than it is to just have routines, which is my do have some freaking routines okay like um routines are just going to save you so much trouble and drama and it's just gonna help you nip a lot of problems in the bud before they even have a chance to grow into a problem and when it comes to routines basically this is just a mini checklist of stuff that you commit to do every morning every afternoon or every night or however you want to do it and so it doesn't have to be like this big, elaborate, extravagant thing. Where's my list? I have my list right here. Morning, I have it on my phone. I have my list everywhere. But every morning I make my bed. I do some hotspot fire drills. I do the dishes and I throw in a load of laundry. I mean, do you see how simple that is? Like, I know that, you know, it's easy to go on Pinterest and see like the long, elaborate, you know, cleaning checklist, you know, you show life together, but it really doesn't have to be that big of a deal, which is perfect for me because your girl is very like low key laid back when it comes to like cleaning and stuff. And like the less I have to do, the better. But when I'm just like walking through the home, walking through my home and I just like, okay, before I do anything, let me just knock out these four things. It just helps me feel like I have a plan 
And then if I go from A to B, like I'll be done. And I'm more motivated to do my routines when I know that there's an end in sight. And so when you commit to just showing up and doing those little bit of little tiny tasks and little tiny checklists throughout your day, it's just going to just help you avoid the buildup. It helps you avoid that buildup of dishes, it helps you avoid the buildup of laundry, it helps you avoid the buildup of clutter. And I just can't tell you how life changing routines have been for me. I have this little wristwatch that I got on Amazon and I literally will set it for 15 minutes because, sorry, you hear my babies, they were dad. Like I try to have routines that, routines that are about 15 minutes or less. Like I really try not to do too much. And a little bit that I do is, it works, it works. It's good enough to help me handle most of the big things in my home. So what that would look like is, let's say I walk in the living room and I see all the toys strewed out on the floor and it's lunchtime. Before, I would just be like, look at this mess. I have to click, pick up these toys, da, da, da. And now the way I do it is I know that I pick up toys in the evening. That is part of my evening routine. But if I don't go handle those dishes, they have the very true potential to get out of control. If I don't swap that laundry right now, then I'm not gonna be able to fold it for later. So it's just like, it helps me determine my priorities a little better. And instead of handling like the big glaringly obvious flashy thing that's in my face that will only take me a few minutes to handle anyway, I can handle the things that are really important to me and the things that really have the potential to stack up and become overwhelming really fast. And so there's one last thing I wanted to say regarding routines um, versus going with the flow. When you have routines, that just means that you commit to showing up no matter what the external condition of your home looks like. Because before I used to decide to do dishes like after I was already angry. I'm like, this has gone too far. So of course I hated cleaning because I waited so long to actually address the problem. So when you have routines, it doesn't matter what, if there's only like 10 dishes in there, it doesn't matter if there's hardly any laundry, it doesn't matter. You show up and you do the task and you check it off your little mini to-do list. And when you do that, instead of waiting for stuff to become a problem, you're just handling it. It really goes a long way in just helping to improve your attitude when it comes to cleaning because you're just like, oh, that's not a big deal. Blah, 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 blah. Like, I would take me two seconds to handle that. So you're really, truly not letting stuff build up on you. So you just show up. It is a standard that you have for yourself based on yourself. It's not based on what your house is looking like. It's not based on anything else. It's just a commitment that you set with yourself and then you just do it. And when you're starting, you don't have to even do as many routines. I got four whole routines, four whole little action steps on my morning routine. You don't have to do that many. Just start with one. Get really good at that. Get really confident with that and then build up as you go. Okay, that brings me to my last item. Mistake that I made was feeling like I have these habits. I have these things that were modeled to me as I was growing up and they're just, it's just what I do. And I didn't really believe in my ability to change. So basically, if you guys hear Baby Shark, I'm sorry. But yeah, basically when I had these self limiting beliefs, I didn't really put a lot of time into trying to change my habits because I just thought that I was who I was and I can't really change that. It really just created a continuous loop of frustration for me and overwhelm and just feeling like I can never catch up. And so um, that leads me to my do. Do believe in your ability to create routines. Um, not only should you believe, not routines, habits. Not only should you believe in your ability to create habits, you should be in the continuous pursuit of creating new habits for yourself. Just in case you don't know, the difference between a routine is like that mini checklist that you create for yourself, right? Like I'm gonna do this, this, and this every morning. I'm gonna do this, this, and this every night. But what happens is when you do the same thing over and over and over, day in and day out, it eventually gets to a point where your brain just takes over and you start doing those things without needing to refer to your checklist or without needing to push through that resistance. Like, I don't really want to. Your brain just kind of takes over and it's like, yeah, 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 I know what to do. And the beauty is you can really play an active role in creating habits that just make your life so much easier. Can you imagine what it would be like if 
You just were always on top of that laundry. You're just always folding it. You don't even think about it anymore. You know what I'm saying? Instead of being like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this right now. I'll do it later. When you create habits, that resistance is not there as much. And the way to create habits that I know is to just do something over and over and over and over again. And eventually you will rewire your brain and you will be doing things that you just be like me, I did that. Like I'm doing this, like I'm on top of things like this. And so it's really a, a special process and it's really a beautiful thing. And I think the biggest thing that you need to be mindful of, mindful, mindful of when you are creating your habits is don't try to do too much at one time. When you're creating your little mini checklist of stuff to do, just make it so easy and so simple that you're just like, seriously, I can't even fail at this. This is so easy. Like this doesn't, you know, and do that. Create a checklist that small. And then after a time, when those little few tasks become habits where you don't have to think about it, then reevaluate your list because it's, it's gonna feel super simple now. And then be like, it's not gonna be a big deal if I add one more thing to it. And then do that for a while. And then in a month's time, be like, let me add one more thing to it. And so um, I guess I'm just saying all this to say that believe in your ability to change. It's so easy to just be like, oh, I'm lazy. Oh, that could never be me. Oh, I don't know how you get it all done. I don't know how you do it. It's easy to sit back and feel sorry for yourself but it's also easy to create simple 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 routines and think about which routine would just give me the most relief in my life right now and just do it and show up as often as you can and so it becomes a habit yeah basically i'm just saying it's equally easy to complain about it and to feel like you can't do it as it is to try to be an active partner in creating routines, which will then transition and turn into habits that will help you out. Um, I just, like I said, I can't even tell you how life changing creating routines has been for me and having those routines slowly transition into habits. And I just want to encourage you that if I can do it, anybody can do it. All right, you guys got this, okay? All right, so what do I want you guys to do um, after watching this video? It's time for my call to action. I highly suggest that you guys take the approach of zone cleaning. Divide your home into four to five major sections. And each week of the month, just give one section a little more TLC and a little more love. Set your timer for 15 minutes and get in there and do all the things that you know you've been putting off. Uh, you would be amazed at how much you can get done if you set your timer for 15 minutes. I want you to go in there and get that vacuuming done. I want you to get in there and change the sheets. I want you to dust. I want you to polish windows. Um, put away stuff. Just do what you can. Um, the more often that you can show up, the better. But even if it's just once a week, I promise you're going to feel so much better by seeing something change in that room and seeing some type of progress. And so really consider putting that on your schedule to show up in different areas of your home throughout the month. Another call to action that I have for you is really think about the area of your home that's giving you the most problem. For me, it was dishes, it was laundry. And I remember when I first started my fly lady routine, the baby step that she gave us was to don't let people put dishes in your sink and you don't put dishes in your sink. And I just remember the relief that I felt when I just didn't feel like swamped with, uh, when I didn't feel swamped with dishes all the time. If you're having a hard time in the dishes department, um, consider setting up mini routines every morning and every night around that and keeping dishes out of your sink at all times and making sure to do something with your dishes every morning and do something with your dishes every night. Even if you just set your timer for 15 minutes, just commit to showing up every morning and every night. And it will get to a point where you're just like, this is not even like an issue for me anymore. You're gonna be so proud of yourself and you're gonna feel inspired to take on your second routine. If your issue is struggling with laundry, then I highly suggest that you find a way to do a load of laundry a day Put your load the way i do mine is i put a load in in the morning i swap out the laundry in the afternoon and i fold it every night and the way that i force myself to fold is i set up a new rule for myself i'm not allowed to do any of my night routines i'm not allowed to cook i'm not allowed to do baths i'm not allowed to do anything until that laundry is folded 
and that gave me the motivation that I needed to show up until it became a habit. And so now I do it and it's not a big deal anymore. But um, those are two that you can start with. Just pick one and any other area of your home, just think of little simple routines that you can do every morning and every night to make them not a problem for you anymore. So that's it. Those are my do's and don'ts from transitioning to a smaller home or an apartment to a family size home. I really don't want you guys like burning yourself out. I don't want you guys struggling with that feeling of feeling like inadequate like I did. Like why is everybody else able to keep up with this crap and I'm on the struggle boat all the time. You don't have to be on the struggle boat. I know that we see, you know, what other people are doing and if they're able to handle that they have the energy for that great but we don't all have to um do it the same way we can find a way that works for us that's not going to overwhelm us that's not going to deplete us and um using the tips that i shared should help you doing the zone cleaning creating really simple basic routines that you can do day in and day out and having faith in your ability of allowing those routines to become habits. You can change, you can be the type of homemaker that can keep your home in pristine condition, as clean as you want it to be, as clean as anybody else's. And you don't have to like bust your neck in the process. So um, I hope that this video was helpful. Um, if you guys have, I, I feel like I have more tips, but uh, if you guys have anything that you would like to share regarding your transition from a smaller home to something, maybe bigger and how you've adapted your routines or your lifestyle to cope with that, please let us know. Um, remember that busting our neck is not an option. So just let us know what realistic hacks you have to just stay on top of everything. So thank you guys so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.